on this episode of the Infinite Loop Show, just try and guess what we're going to talk about. It's all about WWDC. And maybe some kitties. Coming up on the Infinite Loop Show... Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Infinite Loop Show, episode 21. I am Michael Gaines. And I'm Casey Coughlin. <laughs> Are we going to talk about kittens? Unless they're, my new MacBook Pro is going to be <laughs> shuttled in on you know the back of some kittens. Sure. You're, you're getting a new MacBook Pro, aren't you? Maybe. You think? They're, they're pretty amazing. <laughs> you know what I found out today? I went to um, I went to eBay and I went to Gazelle to find out how much my yeah. my Mac Pro one one oh okay costs yeah. or not costs but it's how much it's worth. Uh. <laughs> Gazelle said that they were going to give me three hundred and ten dollars for <gasps> it, dude. <laughs> three hundred and ten. And then on on eBay, I saw machines that were of uh, comparable type. In condition because this is in good shape. I mean, it's been running uh-huh. for six or seven years. That's Forty-five unreal. bucks. Oh my god! <laughs> no, or know what they say about how so little faith. How Jeez. Macs are supposed to retain their value? Why is Apparently, this thing only just worth- people like right and left? Even Apple's been shitting on the Mac Pro. Oh just my nobody. God. God, it's like the new. It's the Rodney Dangerfield of Macs. Apparently, <laughs> I tell you. So, of course, the big news today is the fact that uh, WWDC uh, started in uh, San Francisco. And or what were your impressions of the whole thing? Before we get into the specifics, how did you think the presentation went? Um, I don't know. I, I mean, <laughs> well, that's the, right. you the didn't pictures watch it. look good. I, I haven't gotten a chance to watch the keynote yet. I just... We, Got home from work and we're doing the show now, yeah, so I'm, I'll watch it later. Sorry, I completely forgot about that. That's right, you were you were you had a busy day. Uh, it looked amazing. It was the <laughs> best keynote ever. Tim looked fabulous and thin, and I don't know. <laughs> so I was watching it on uh, Live TV. They were finding uh, pirated streams <laughs> on UStream. Yeah, I heard about that, but I couldn't I couldn't listen in. Yeah, there were two streams uh there was one and that got shut down and then there was a second one that lasted for quite a while i'm surprised the apple police didn't didn't get them but anyway the the point of this whole thing is that apple announced a whole bunch of new stuff and mm-hmm. some of the naysayers were saying eh, yeah, it's not it's just a developers conference apple's not going to really do anything well they <laughs> blew the crap out of everybody <laughs> let's start with ios 6 yes which we knew um Quite, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, okay, so like a lot of things, uh, the rumors that were kind of leaked um, told pretty much half the story, but there were still some surprises. Mm-hmm. Um, I think everybody was super pleased with the advancements Siri will be making mm-hmm. in iOS 6. Um, she's definitely uh, smarter. She can now, wait for it, launch apps. <laughs> oh, my God. That's actually nice because if you're in the car or something, you want to launch the map app, I think that's great. Yeah, no, it, it it's no matter where you are or what you're doing. I mean, you could be on the toilet. It's great. Um, <laughs> well, I don't know if you want to be talking to your phone on the toilet. Well, now you can, <laughs> should you want to. Um, she'll also get sports scores and stats, so mm-hmm. you can pretty much just ask about a team or a date or a player for stats and scores, um, game dates, anything from MLB, NBA, NFL. Um, ju- I think she'll do hockey as well, just mm-hmm. about anything. So that's neat for that. <laughs> well, you might not like the sports thing. I sort of like the sports thing. But what I do is I, I have an ESPN app. It's a, it's basically just ESPN Sports Center scores or something like that. Um, and if I on a Sunday, what if I'm watching football or something to see how the other teams are doing? I'll just fire it up. Mm-hmm. I, I move it to like my second page on my phone during mm-hmm. uh, football season, and so it's right there. Um, when you're in a sports bar, I can't see the ambient noise. 
right. really doing well for Siri. Because you're going to say, Siri, tell me how the Giants are doing. And then it's going to come out sounding like a whole bunch of drunk people behind you. So, Well, if you're in a sports <laughs> but, bar, aren't you going to know how they're doing? I mean, unless the sports bar only has one TV. But I don't know the, a sports yeah. bar nowadays that... <laughs> Less than like the, the 10 sports, TVs. The sports bar that I generally go to has um, TVs all over the place. But the problem right. is that sometimes you have to walk all the way to the other side of the bar in order to find oh out my like, God. what the Not brown score is. Not walking across to the other <laughs> side of the bar. That's horrible. <laughs> if but there's one there, thing I hate doing in bars, it's walking around. But then there's an, another one I go to that only has like one TV. <laughs> so... <laughs> Is that like in someone's garage? No, no, no. It's a well-known place, but they don't have any any TVs. They just have the one. Really? Very strange. Hey, besides that, so so Siri is smarter, as you wrote in our notes. Um, it's going to launch apps and everything, but it's now going to be on the iPad 3. It is full Siri on iPad 3. So you have to get the new one, mm-hmm. but um, she'll be there. She'll so, be there. There you go. Um. We've got a new map application. Yeah, with turn-by-turn navigation. This has been something a lot of people have wanted for a very long time. Mm-hmm. I, I think that what's going to happen is there are going to be a lot of companies that are going to be pissed about this because they charge a premium for stuff like this. Oh, yeah. No, I... Well, I mean, I think those companies are already kind of pissed off. The last two times I've been car shopping... Mm-hmm. You know, they try to upsell you for the the huge like five inch nav display. Mm-hmm. Every time, I I immediately say, "Look, I don't need that. I have an iPhone. Mm-hmm. Duh. Mm-hmm. Like it'll do all that and then some. Yeah. Um, even if it doesn't talk or speak the turn by turn navigation out to me, I mean, I still don't need to be paying that premium." regardless Mm -hmm. um but now you really really don't yeah and this has kind of been along with the uh speech recognition uh essentially siri Mm -hmm. siri um this has been one of those things that android people have always been able to laud over uh iphone people so take that (laughs) uh i'll just say this It's, it's on the bottom of my list but i'll just bring it up here because we're talking about cars um, Apple said that they're going to have a button in certain cars in the next few years that integrate directly with Siri, and then you can put your iPhone on a dock in the yeah. car, and yeah. and it's going to be called Eyes Free. So all you have to do is hit a button on your steering wheel. The mm-hmm. the display on the phone stays black, and you can talk to Siri, and it'll talk back to you. So if you want to say, Siri, play this album. Siri, give me turn-by-turn navigation to whatever – It'll be there directly in your car, and I uh, now. So let's see what they get rid of now. The five-inch display is gone. OnStar, maybe. No, 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 no. Even more than that. What? Ford's or Microsoft's. Oh, the, uh, the, the the Ford Sync. So I said in a, in a yeah. tweet when this whole thing started. Now I'm a Chevy guy. Chevy's been in my family yeah. for many years. Uh, my wife had a Ford Explorer, and we hated it because it drives like a truck, and we didn't like it at all. I was never a big Ford fan, and I liked the Ford Sync idea, but I didn't. It wasn't enough for me to buy a Ford because I'm a Chevy guy. I I, mm-hmm. I just can't ever buy a Ford. That's just okay. how I am, and so. When I saw this, uh, they said that GM is one of the companies yeah. that are going to be putting oh. this in, in their cars. So my first thought Which was... totally uh, makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So now they're just digging that into Ford's side. Yep. They're digging it. Now the whole Ford Sync thing is, is, is like... I, I, I got to say, that I haven't huge tried thing it. Ford had over every car yep, manufacturer. It did. And now it's completely off the table. Ford, Ford Sync got me to look at Ford's. Yeah. But that yeah. was as far as I went because... I mean, for me, I'm, I'm I'm just too much of a Chevy fan to ever, ever buy a Ford. So it got me to look at Ford Sync. Um, but all I can say now is that with the... Because uh, now you're going to have an iPhone. And now yeah, people are going to say... Yeah, you already have half of it. You've, so. you've got Ford Sync or, or something equivalent to it. Now, I don't know if it has all the features of Ford Sync, but you've got a lot of features from Ford Sync in your damn phone. So now yeah. you don't even... All you have to do is dock it, hit the button, and and, and there you go. There you go. So, 
Apple is Apple just pissed a lot of companies off today. As I know, <laughs> they started the keynote. I heard by really ripping on Android. Oh, they did, but their fragmentation, uh, fragmentation, and mm-hmm. everything. So I can't wait to watch the keynote. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> for many reasons, but. Uh, so what else we got in iOS 6? Uh, the do not disturb feature, which a lot of people were excited about, but then mm-hmm. they really went into detail that you can, it's not just kind of an on off switch, like your, uh, vibrate button is on the side of the iPhone. You can really get granular with this, which mm-hmm. is really nice. Mm-hmm. You can star contacts that you want to hear from and say, mute everybody else. You can, you know, just mute calls and not texts or, you can mute everyone except for one person. I mean, it sounds pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. And it, this will go across all notifications. So not just calls and texts, but emails, everything. Mm-hmm. What I said in, on Twitter about this is that this is good for going to meetings. But not only that, when you go, being a parent, when you go to the movies, when you go out to dinner, if you want to turn your phone off, so that your friends or irrelevant phone calls don't come in and bother you. You yeah. can shut all those off, except for the ones from your house and your babysitter. Right. And that's yeah, it. So ones. only those get through. So so it'll just leave you alone to enjoy the movie. And mm-hmm. if something comes in, God forbid, then you know that it's important. Um, so I'm absolutely loving this. Yeah, and they, they'll still all come in. You just won't hear about it. So, like, say mm-hmm. you get out of your movie or your meeting, you can go back to Notification Center and everything will be right there. Mm-hmm. Like, they all came in as normal. But you just won't get the, the buzz or whatever. But it's how they do it that's cool. They have a geofence. So, it says, mm-hmm. if, if, I'm, yeah. if I go outside well, I this that's radius. that's one of the options. It yeah. won't. That that's one of the options you can put on. So, I mean, it won't do that by default. Mm-hmm. But that's... One thing you can say, like, oh no, it was, it's not just part of the do not disturb thing. I think it was uh, part of the remind me later. Yeah, this that, is that also. part of uh, uh, it's, it's an expansion on notification center, mm-hmm. I think, more. So when notifications come in, instead of like texts and calls and voicemails, they'll come back twice and, and bug you again, mm-hmm. which I always find annoying. <laughs> um, but you can actually, there'll be more options. So you, when it comes in, you can say, remind me in an hour. Mm-hmm. Or remind me when I leave here and it'll set up a geofence. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's nice. Yeah, I like that a lot. Uh, FaceTime over cellular. They, they said that you were going to be able to do that now, but they did not get into the specifics of whether or not it's going to be 3G, 4G, and what carriers. Yeah, exactly. They they said cellular, which is odd because Apple never says cellular. They mm-hmm. always say over 3G or 4G or over data. Right. Or Wi-Fi. They, it's either data or Wi-Fi. They mm-hmm. never say cellular. Right. So, I mean, at, on one hand, everybody's like, yeah, finally. But then on the other, everybody's thinking about it going, well, what does that really mean? And yeah. we probably won't know until iOS 6 officially comes out and we can practice and test it out. Yeah, somebody will, will tell us, but I'm guessing it's going to be 4G only. Uh, uh, yeah, maybe. Maybe. We shall see. Mm-hmm. Facebook integration. Uh, this is interesting because now you can basically take things that you've done. And, and this... Um, no, it's not on OS ten, but but you can take a picture and no, it will be on Mountain Lion. It will be a mount, right Mountain Lion, but not uh, not, not Lion. Um, you can just post stuff directly to Facebook. You can just, just like hit you a can with Twitter in mm-hmm. iOS, where it brings up the tweet sheet. Mm-hmm. Um, it'll do that with Facebook now, and both of these features will be in Mountain Lion. Mm-hmm. Um, what's uh, Passbook? Tell us about that. So this is a new, and I don't know if it was a feature of iOS or just a new app that Apple was going to put out. Um, maybe it's just one of their standard apps, I guess. Um, but it's it's an app that will collect all of your tickets and itinerary and like shopper membership cards, mm-hmm. uh, gift cards, pretty much everything except real modes of payment Mm -hmm. um credit cards or paypal or square (laughs) or uh stuff like that so all the everything else your movie tickets um 
gift cards. It organizes everything into like a nice little tabbed mm -hmm. interface. So you'll have that whenever. <laughs> um, there was a uh, there was an app that I have. I forgot what it was called. It was a card something. Um, there was yeah. There was an app I had years ago that did this with um, shopper membership cards, like your Rouse Club card and yes. your Albert Club card, and you put in the card you had, and you put in that long number <laughs> under the barcode in there, and then what it would do is when you're at the store and you tap on which mm -hmm. one you want, it brings up a barcode and you're supposed to then scan that on the scanner at the store for your club card. Never, never works. And that's, never works. That's the big problem that I have with this whole thing. It's called um, Card Star. And yeah, so it's a, like right now it's bringing up my gym membership thing. And um, I remember going to the gym and the girl was trying to scan it and it never worked. Yeah, you're um, like, this is the best until you actually <laughs> go to use it for the and then it doesn't function. work yeah uh so i don't know how that's gonna work I, I i just don't because if if these uh barcode scanners don't read off the screens then what are you gonna do right the what, clerk's gonna... gonna it's just gonna be organizational so that you have a place to put down numbers that you can mm -hmm. then read off to people although why not just those in an Excel spreadsheet then. When I went to New York Comic Con, this is not related to Cardstar because all, all Cardstar does is just show your um, barcode as an image. But when mm -hmm. I went to New York Comic Con, I didn't bring the paper, uh, the paper ticket. I basically mm -hmm. just brought my phone, brought up the email, sh and, and zoomed into the barcode, and their scanner read it just fine. Oh, I do that all the time with um, like coupons if you get email coupons to say like Fridays or something, mm -hmm. you know, we'll show them the coupon that you're supposed to print out on our iPhone all the time. But those always have like the register code that they, they have to put in. Like there's a six digit code at the bottom. Right. So they don't have to literally scan the barcode off the screen. They just see that code and, and put it into the register. Yeah. And, but it makes a little more work for the clerk. Well, no more than, uh -oh. I mean, really? Well, <laughs> then scanning like, I, oh, I have to type in six digits instead of like clicking the freaking, you know, scan gun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all right. So the shared photo stream, this, if I understand this correctly, it allows you to only share certain pictures with certain people. Right? Well, it sounds like they're kind of trying to replace uh, galleries mm -hmm. on um, via iWeb on MobileMe mm -hmm. or dot .Mac way back when. Right. Um, this is kind of one of those things that a lot of people used but never really got you know much um, attention or spotlight, I mm -hmm. guess. Um, but it sounds like they're kind of trying to bring that back via this. Right. And well, which is fine because a lot of people use that feature. On iWeb. And then this, <laughs> tell us why you wrote meh next to lost mode. Uh, so, and there's an, another new thing in iOS 6 called lost mode, which kind of expands on find my iPhone, which all it does is if you lose your iPhone mm -hmm. and then you, I guess you log in through the browser or some other iOS device, and you can send a message to the phone, which, A, you can already do with Find My iPhone, mm -hmm. but it'll send a message with a phone number that you've input, and that person, whoever has stolen your iPhone or found your <laughs> iPhone, will obviously call this number and obviously. say, hey, I've got your iPhone. That's weird. Um, a... You can pretty much already do this with the, the send a message feature in Find mm -hmm. My iPhone. Mm -hmm. And B, nobody's going to do that. Yeah, nobody's. I'm not. You come across a lost iPhone. Are you, like, concerned about finding the owner? No, you're concerned about getting that shit up on Craigslist as no. soon as possible. <laughs> no, some people are honest. <laughs> I don't believe it. <laughs> because if even if you put it up on Craigslist, the fun my phone is still going to work. You, you yeah. got to be pretty stupid to put a, a stolen or a found iPhone on Craigslist nowadays because it'll just get found. Well, yeah, but I mean, I know a lot of people who have lost their iPhones. You know how many of them have found them? Mm, how many? Zero? <laughs> yeah. Mm. All right. So then the big surprise. Now, last week, we... 
we saw specs, a sticker, a supposed mm-hmm. sticker yes. for the new MacBook Pros, and we went, really? That's it? And so when they're... No, it's w- still half true. Well, it's, it, well, I'm getting to that. So they, they're doing the keynote, and they say, well, new Mac Pros, and here are the crappy spec bumps, and everybody just went, okay, well, I suppose. <laughs> but then they said, you know what? We can make it better, and blew everybody away. <laughs> They did, and then they literally brought out a shotgun and <laughs> blew everybody away. Retina display, twenty eight eighty by fourteen forty. No, I'm sorry, no, uh, uh, twenty eight eighty by eighteen hundred. Counting the pixels at this point, like, why do we even still use numbers? Just a <laughs> shit ton of pixels compared to a little bit of pixels before. It has it's it's double the resolution, double the density of fourteen forty by nine hundred. So twenty eight eighty by by eighteen hundred. And no, I was getting into this with some people, in tw- not as an argument. We're discussing the advantages of of the iMac. Excuse me, the current iMac, mm-hmm. which is twenty five. It's twenty five sixty by. Yeah, it was the uh, what used to be the thirty inch cinema displays mm-hmm. resolution. Right. But it's not packing the pixels in the same density. So even though no. you get the same physical resolution, it's 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 not the same. It's not going to display the same. Mm-hmm. Well, so, it's like when you get TVs, mm-hmm. all HD TVs are 1080p. Sure. Regardless if it's 30 inches or 80 inches. Mm-hmm. So how is that the same? Yeah. Exactly. You know, it's the same no it's the same resolution across thirty inches mm-hmm. or eighty inches. There's no way that's the same. Yeah, it's it's all how the pixels are packed in there. Mm-hmm. Uh so th- now there's a retina display and everybody's cheered. Now the reason for me that I would want a retina display is because I do development on retina display iPads and iPhones. So I would like to see what they look I, like yeah. on a on a retina display as I'm developing. So that helps me. However, I don't know if I really need a MacBook Pro, but we'll get into that. Ivy Bridge, which we all knew was going to happen. So there's no big surprise there. Um, surprise, yeah. <laughs> now it's, uh, let me see, was it was a two, I got to bring the specs up because I didn't have it written down. The um, the specs are, I believe, 2.3, you know what, I'm just going to bring it up. Because 2.33 gigahertz? Yeah, and then there's a speed uh, turbo boost. Let me bring it up here. That goes up to three point something. Yeah, I should I should have brought it up before, but I didn't. You know, Apple site is so awesome because mm-hmm. it's it's not full of crap and it doesn't take like well, forever to well, load. Duh, it's full <laughs> no, of I'm just <laughs> I'm just saying that you know sometimes when you need to get something fast and you go to these websites and it has to load a whole bunch of crap. Oh yeah, no, flash. they put a lot of work in for their stuff to not only withstand an enormous load. But also to render really quick. <laughs> okay, um, go ahead. Oh no, I thought you were still looking. I was no. just gonna fill. Processor yeah. on the 15-inch MacBook Pro is 2.3 gigahertz and turbo boost up to 3.3 with an Intel Core nice. i7. Wow. Yeah, so i ste- i7s I think are standard across across the line, even the non-retina ones, right? Um, I don't know, but I can check real quick. Um, but they're not on the they're not standard on the iMac. So you can still get an i5 on an iMac. Yeah. Um, let me see the note i5s on the on older the MacBook Pro. Yeah, but oh. only only on the th- low end 13. The rest of them have i7s. i7s. Okay. okay. So um, the 15 inch MacBook Pro with a 2.6 gigahertz i7 uh, has a turbo boost up to 3.6 gigahertz, which is nice. I've played with turbo boost before and it it does what it's supposed to do. It, it speeds up when you need it and then slows yeah. down when you don't. So mm-hmm. that works out great. Um, I this I guess this is where I'm going to start talking about <laughs> new computers because people that have been listening know that I've been wanting a Mac Pro. Mm hmm. And there were a Mac. There was a new Mac Pro, and I got all excited, and only found out that it was it's the and then same you found old out chip what was inside. with a speed boost. It was crap. It didn't even have. Okay, Thunderbolt. okay, okay. We're not done with the MacBook Pro. No, I'm, I'm saying the, the I'm I'm tempted to get the MacBook Pro. I'm very very. They're tempted. really kind of pushing this as the new Mac Pro. They are, and they're like, what are you looking for a desktop for? Mm-hmm. To take this, take the cinema display. 
go home. Mm-hmm. Done. And then <laughs> you can take this damn thing with you. And, and, and so this is why I'm sort of going off on a tangent about the iMac is because at, at the processor level, um, this is where I started having problems deciding whether or not I'm going to, because the Mac Pros to me, they're, they're done. To everybody else, they're done. If they didn't I think, boost, yeah, to you, to Apple, to they, they seem to be going out. To people on eBay, they're done. So the IMAX have a three point, if I remember this correctly, three point three and a three no three point two and a three point four gigahertz processor, and I want to get the twenty seven inch. But the problem is that if you get the MacBook Pro, you have to buy a Thunderbolt adapter for your display, and then you have to buy a Thunderbolt adapter for your Ethernet port. And so even though as amazing as this machine is, it's convert all the things, which is what you wrote. <laughs> so uh, where yeah. did you write that? I forgot where you wrote that. But um, on Google on Plus. Because Plus. I'm looking to get this new one. So I'm looking, okay, what really do I need to add to this purchase? Because um, it, uh, and uh, going down our list, uh, no, like you said, no Ethernet. Mm-hmm. So you'll need an adapter for that. No optical drive, so I might need an external for that. Mm-hmm. Um, SSD hard drive. So that's awesome, but then you're limited in space. Either 256 on the base model mm-hmm. or up to 512, and that's it. Mm-hmm. So probably an external hard drive as well for storage. Or an array. Um, RAM soldered to the board, so you're stuck there. Either 8 or 16 gigs. Mm-hmm. It's nice that you know 8 is the baseline, but then there's really no upgrading beyond Apple's RAM. So, right. um, but I mean, so it's oh, and then there's a new MagSafe. Uh, oh yeah, you were port. saying about so that. So I've got two or three MagSafe power adapters, which I don't want to buy all new ones, obviously. So there's a fourth adapter I need to mm-hmm. get. And so th- this whole thing for me as a Mac Pro owner, and, and I'm, I'm mentioning this not just for myself, but for other people. If you're a Mac Pro owner and you're used to having this beefy system all the time with your optical drives and your ports and everything like that, if you're deciding on getting a MacBook Pro, then you just have to look at it and go, um... Okay, so what am I going to be limited by? So, yeah. for example, I'm just going to show this here. So, I got this new CD. Well, it's Star Trek. But um, it, where, how would I read that in? I would have to get an optical drive. There's mm-hmm. just no way around it because this is not offered digitally. It's CD only. So, I have yeah. to have an optical drive. So, there's an added cost to that. The mm-hmm. added cost for the adapter that you were talking about. So, you got to get all these adapters. But- so... On the other hand, they do give you two Thunderbolts, finally. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Two USB 3 ports, so that's nice. Mm -hmm. And an HDMI port. That's amazing, isn't it? That's insane. (laughs) Insane. (laughs) The HDMI port alone, um, the ramifications of that, and and I... Early on in our show, I think like mm-hmm. maybe episode one through three or something like that, didn't I say something about how Apple does not support um, like 5.1 and 7.1 audio? Really? They just mm-hmm. don't? Because the Mac Pros were the only machines, I believe, I don't think the iMacs had them, that had optical ports so that you can plug it into a yeah. home theater system. Yeah. Now you've mm-hmm. got HDMI. You should be able to take yeah. some form of a movie or something <laughs> that's in 7.1 and plug it into your HDMI system, your home mm-hmm. theater system, and it should play in 7.1. Well, okay, that, but I'm also thinking, say you don't need, for whatever reason, mm-hmm. you don't need a Ethernet adapter. Mm-hmm. You essentially have three video ports on a laptop. Yep. That's crazy. And, like, and- I'm struggling with one mini display port or one uh, Thunderbolt port on here and, and trying to hook up two displays to this where I had to get, like, a USB adapter and mm-hmm. get some crazy, you know, adapter business going. And then, you know, I'm losing one of my two precious USB ports. Right. So this, like, solves all your problems in in terms of that anyway. Sort of. Because for me, I would need Ethernet. I mean, I... I don't trust Wi-Fi. I just don't. Yeah. Um, I but on need- that, okay, so do you go with the USB to Ethernet adapter or their new Thunderbolt to Ethernet adapter? I, I would probably... The same price. I would use USB because then it will leave one of my Thunderbolt ports free and I would need that for an external monitor. Like this, you- this Dell that I've got. 
what are you sacrificing in terms of speed then? Is it gigabit either way or what? You it's know, it's gigabit either way. So I'm not sacrificing any speed there. Okay. Um, I just want to make sure that I have the Thunderbolt port. Now, the problem that I'm going to have is it's it's not so much it, uh, it's not so much the ports and the adapters that's the problem. Mm-hmm. It's the physical space that's going to be taken up by everything that's going to be there. So, like my optical, I I, I need an optical drive. I do. People are saying yeah. optical is dead, but when you buy a CD um, that you have to because it's not offered digitally, then what do you do? And so I think okay. So I think a lot of people when they're going to be okay when you have all this stuff plugged in mm-hmm. literally say you're when a, you're not doing this on the road really you're right. probably only doing this either at work mm-hmm. or at home where you're kind of sedentary mm-hmm. um so the only times you'll be having all of these peripherals hanging off every you know side and just junk on either side of it a you're probably going to be at home or at work like mm-hmm. i said or B, you're going to be in a place where you can probably use one of those nice 12 South um, MacBook arcs. Mm-hmm. You just close it up. It doesn't take a whole lot of space there. Yeah. All your peripherals are just kind of hanging off and they're just kind of over there. Though. Mm-hmm. You know, so I don't think it'll take up a whole lot of space unless you have it open with everything splayed out. I don't know. I, I don't, don't think know. that'll happen very often, I, though. I, I could easily build a shelf in where the macbook where the, where the mac pro is now from from the underneath bottom of my uh of my desk and i just hit it okay I, I just there we go i hit a wire and then everything went to hell um <laughs> but um i could build something there to hold like maybe a raid array or something like that if mm, i had to yeah plug it in so i don't get know get one of those thunderbolt docks and really set up kind of like a um a huge apparatus right to rebuild everything <laughs> they've taken out oh which reminds me another um really awesome thing that i'm excited about on the new macbook pros mm-hmm. improved speakers and yes. microphones two microphones and uh, camera so and an improved camera so everything you know audio visual podcasting mm-hmm. super great yep Although I wouldn't trade that for a microphone, but yeah. For, for, <laughs> oh, what? I've already started <laughs> real eBay. What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, so I I like the MacBook Pros. I I'm I'm not quite sure. Like with, with I'm a, here's the thing. I'm stuttering a little bit because I've got so many thoughts in my head. The iMacs are four hundred over four hundred days old. So the question is, when are we going to get new ones? And if we do get new ones, are we going to get the same speed bump? Because for me, I don't need a portable. I already have a MacBook Pro, an older one, but I have one. I don't need a new one, but I want a desktop machine. Um, If anything, just because of the monitor situation. I'd imagine you probably get the same boost to everything. Retina, you know, Mm -hmm. graphics boost, uh, CPU boost to... Thunderbolt ports, maybe they go down to two USB, but they'd be better served, you know, keeping that at three or four USBs. Wi-Fi or uh, HDMI. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd bet it'd be pretty comparable. I don't think there'd be anything surprising yeah. or new to the IMAX that didn't happen to the MacBook Pros today. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have to agree with you on that. Although, I'm just thinking about this. With HDMI, if you can hook up an external Blu-ray drive, um, mm. there is software out there that will run store-bought Blu-rays. And so you won't have to... So you can actually run it as your... I, I'd have to see how well could it works. Could you burn but, as well? Well, that's a... Comp- you could burn Blu-ray at home. Yes, you can. I have a Blu-ray burner. Okay. However... Um, I don't use it for ripping Hollywood stuff. That's for my own stuff, like home home uh-huh. movies and stuff. No, I, I don't do that. But um, who doesn't make home movies on I, Blu-ray? I have a lot of home movies, <laughs> tons uh, of them. That almost sounded like <laughs> no, like, like of the kids and things like uh, that. Oh, okay. And so I put them on. I I burn them on Blu-ray. Um. Oh, and and one last thing on the Mac Pros before we move on. Mm -hmm. No more 17s. That's right. We have a 13. We have two 15s. Mm -hmm. 
And that's it. No more 17s. I guess they weren't selling. I have a I 17. I guess not. I have an older 17. They're just 17. crapping on all the uh, you know, high-end production stuff. Well, they're making the Retina 15-inch really kind of the beefy mm-hmm. workhorse production model, and which was the 17-inch up mm-hmm. until this point. So uh, the new Mac the new Mac Pro, I, I make it sound like it's such a big deal. No, the, all it, like I said before, all it got was like a minor speed boost. No Thunderbolt. Oh, so minor. Not, not even a Sandy Bird Xeon. I was so upset. No. And so now no you know ports, that... Which what? is amazing. No new ports. No Thunderbolt still. Nothing. Like, they might as well as have not even done this update. It's so minor. <laughs> it's such like a... Cock tease. Uh, <laughs> you can call it that because, like I said, I, when when the store came up, there were people in my Twitter stream that are going, "Oh my God, new Mac Pros!" And because the store was like up down, up down, up down, people really couldn't tell. And so the assumption was, well, this they must have. Spoof. This is they haven't quite fully updated it yet. Yeah. Right. So we didn't. We just all assumed that there were going to be Sandy Bridge. Who knew? That they would have the older chips in them. That's just so ridiculous. And, and I an apple for that. I'm just really yeah, upset I know. with them. Because yeah, um, it's really, really um, kind of disappointing, I think, because so many people were so hopeful. And it was almost like Apple artificially got everybody's hopes up by calling them new. Yeah. They really shouldn't even put that new tag next to the Mac Pro on the store. Yeah, they should have just killed it. Just, like, just seriously. It. Just kill cuz cuz who's going to buy one now? Nobody's going to buy that. No. No, the the studio the people that are running studios and and such that need the beefy machines, they're going to be buying these MacBook Pros and and I would bet that we're going to get a new iMac within Three months. Yeah, they're so yeah. That almost puts well, no, it definitely puts more pressure on the new IMAX to mm-hmm. a come out and come out really friggin' soon because now all these people who were waiting with bated breath for the new Mac Pros are all just brr. Now what do I get? Yeah, they're yeah, all gonna go to that IMAX. So produce one quickly yeah i still think that apple should have come out with something today unless the uh, in terms of an imac because it seems like what they're doing look apple's a business i don't fault them for that but it looks like they're trying to push people into buying these macbook pros but if if on this on the same hand like when has and i mean we said this last week that if they update the whole line this will be the biggest single launch in Apple history. Yeah. When have they ever updated all laptops and desktops together? Oh, you know, it's been it's been a long time. It's usually one or the other. Yeah. You know, they'll update the desktops, the the mini and the iMac, and then a couple months later the laptops will be updated yeah. or vice versa. Yeah. It's it's been like that for I don't know how many years now. Because for whatever reason, they want to push people into one or the other. And so, like, people that are... Well, not necessarily even that, but especially with new CPU updates. It's kind of like if this... If something catastrophic should happen when they actually go into retail stores that didn't happen in testing, Mm -hmm. then they're not, you know, contingent on pulling back the whole line. Sure. In a sense, yeah, I, uh, I mean, it makes sense with newer processors or newer anything, newer uh, form factors. You know, when the unibodies came out, they only did the the pros, and mm-hmm. then everybody else kind of got it. So it, it it's it's kind of logical and smart in that way that if you're testing some or a new thing, you know, you don't splurge all over the place with it. Sure. Uh, so. Yeah, let the Mac Pros die. Um, Mountain Lion, they said it's coming out Yay! next month. That next was unexpected. Month? Yes, next month. People were saying it was unexpected. Now, I'm a yeah. developer, but I haven't been using it because the only machine that I have to use it with is this MacBook Pro, and I don't use it very often. Um, so Mountain Lion, for me, I, it's, it's, it's going to be a problem because I'm not going to be able to run it on anything but this, and this is not my main machine. So... 
it's it's coming out next month. Uh, people were saying that the reason I'm, I'm saying all this is because I don't run it, but people were saying there are a lot of bugs with it. Uh, and so, plus, there haven't even been a lot of dev previews released. Mm -hmm. Generally, you see a lot more previews and a lot more ramping up right before the release. And mm -hmm. so there hasn't been that ramp up. And so a lot of people are like, oh, it's probably not ready yet. Yeah. Uh, and maybe it's not. But uh, they're only up to DP. I think DP4 came out today and server DP5 came out mm -hmm. today. Uh, it's going to be $20. 20 and bucks. For essentially a family I, pack. I, let me it's tell you, it's not one computer. What, it's every, all of them. What all bothered the me about this whole thing is that that there are people that that seem to feel that they're entitled to get this for free. Okay. I mean, how much lower does Apple have to to, to yeah. bring their Come price down? People are dropping one hundred fifty, two hundred, three hundred, four hundred dollars on Windows. I was just gonna say, compare that to Windows. And, I mean, I know we're getting a little bit jaded here with with Macs and and within our own ecosystem. Okay, yeah, maybe. But if you compare this to the greater whole, which mm -hmm. I guess would only be Windows because Ubuntu is still free. Yeah. Um, Windows is yeah at least um, what I think the cheapest one is one thirty yeah for an upgrade. something like that for Windows and seven that's, yeah uh, the, one the home computer? edition yeah one computer upgrade only mm -hmm. you have to have a previous version you know or a, a recent version installed mm -hmm. one hundred and thirty bucks one hundred and thirty and yet people are bitching that twenty dollars is too much really for all your Macs. A year later, like July will be exactly one year that mm -hmm. Lion came out, and we've already got a new release that's pretty substantially different. Yeah, I think. And if you um, if you take all the not, money that you spent over the last year, you're still spending forty dollars. That's still not yeah. a lot of money. That's still. And you can actually upgrade from Snow Leopard from this. Yes. So, so it's it's pretty nice. And. Um, I, I still can't see why people are complaining about the cost. I mean, I, it's no. I was blown away when I heard that because I thought at the very least thirty, and I was like, oh my god, they're already beating the amazingly low price that Lion was. Because mm -hmm. remember they're when operating systems? Lower. Yeah, remember when OS ten used to be ninety nine dollars? Yeah, yeah, I do actually. <laughs> And the family pack was what one sixty, I think. Something like that, and now it's and then 20 they bucks. went down to like sixty, and I couldn't even believe that. Like, oh my god, you know, like Lion was super cheap, and it seems to me that they're making most of their money on the hardware, which may sound like duh, of course they are, but yeah. it it seemed to me years ago that when they weren't selling as much hardware, and I'm not just talking about the the computers, I'm talking about like mm -hmm. iPhones and and iPods and such. They could charge ninety nine dollars because they were able to. They weren't selling as many machines, so to keep their profits mm -hmm. up, they had to sell for mm -hmm. for ninety nine bucks. Now that they're selling tons of stuff and they have all this money, they're giving us a break. Now, if they wanted to, you know what? I will bet you that they can give it away for free. If they really wanted to, they can give Probably, it away for free. Probably, yeah. I mean, and how much cash do they have in reserve? A they're lot. not going broke anytime soon. No. But and how much money are they getting from app developers? Um, you know everything else i mean they're you, they have other revenue streams yeah in fact i would like to see them give it away for free but you know what they're still a business regardless mm -hmm. of what it's it's like when you go to the pump exxon may have a lot of money but you still got to pay the the three or four dollars whatever it is in your area for a gallon of gas here it's 330 something or 340 something you still got to pay that so yeah. Paying twenty bucks, how much? How much do people pay in gas every day, every week? So I starting to sound a little, <laughs> at least a little angry. That. But I, I was people were justifying the fact that, that this whole thing should be for free and twenty dollars was too much. I'm like, uh, you know what? Oh yeah, because those people are just gonna sit at home when it comes out next month and goes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to pay just on principle. No, <laughs> those people are going to be clicking the download button the minute it goes up on the Mac That's App right. Store. That's right. And I'm going to be one of them. I'm gonna, mm -hmm. Well, going to be no, I think happy developers, to pay that 20 bucks. I don't know if developers happy. get a free copy or not. Don't remember. Uh, I think. Do we? So, uh, I mean, if you consider the, the dev version free. Well, they give you a GM version. Yeah. But as you a user, I think you're still supposed to pay for it. Technically, for so I'm privilege. probably just I'll throw so. in 20 bucks. Jeez, <laughs> it's 20 bucks. Yeah. 
Xcode 4.5 preview uh, was released today. I haven't looked at it yet. I don't know what's good or bad. I just wanted to mention that it's out there. Uh, mm-hmm. So if you're a developer and uh, you're interested in Xcode, do that. Uh, what I have been doing lately is I, I had a, a project that started on Snow Leopard with um, Xcode 3. 3.2, I believe it was. And so now what I'm doing is I'm moving the project up to 4. Um, and it's it's a, an interesting thing. Like it runs right off the bat, and that's really all you want. Uh, you just want to make sure that everything compiles with a new compiler and everything like yeah, that in, yeah. in in Xcode. But um, now I'm starting a new project, a whole new project, which is sort of like um, well, I'm not going to get into the details. But but the app that I just wrote was sort of a small version, small tool of this grander thing that that we're working on. And so that is going to be done with storyboarding and and all these. Nice. Amaze balls things that um, that you can do with with Xcode. So I'm looking forward to diving into that. Uh, I don't know when Xcode 4.5 is supposed to come out. I don't know if that comes out with uh, Mountain Lion or not. Probably, Probably. with Mountain Lion. Because I don't think and they said on stage. No, they didn't talk about that, and they didn't talk about Mountain Lion server either. Which I'd be yeah. curious if that comes down in price as well, because Lion server was a hell of a lot cheaper than even yeah. Snow Leopard server. Like all these OSs have been coming down sub- substantially in mm-hmm. price. I paid. I remember I went to the Apple Store by me and paid five hundred dollars. I know for server Tiger. Used to be I think so it was crazy. Tiger expensive. server. Now this this Mac Pro. The problem with the Mac Pro is that I can use it as a server. I used to use my old G5 as a server, and it worked amazingly well as People a server. People still do, and they'd still like you to. There's a server version right. of the new Mac Pro. <laughs> but there's a problem with this machine is that it generates a ton of heat. Oh, yeah, And therefore, heat. a lot of electricity. And I'm not quite sure that I really need this kind of machine to to waste that kind of yeah. electricity. I bet that wouldn't uh, pass Apple's current, you know... <laughs> green super eco standards i'm, they I'm got just saying everything. that over a network um having this machine considering the fact that i can only get just 300 bucks for it how much does a drobo cost uh 300 bucks something like that right so i've got myself a freaking comparable version of a drobo a huge drobo and i don't this thing has an have you ever used the optical? It's not an optical, the audio optical. Does, doesn't the Mac yeah, Pros have like that optical? Audio. No, no, not optical audio. It doesn't have like it had some sort of Xserve type connector, or some sort of um, fiber optic port, didn't they? I not think that I know. Uh, I'm, maybe the I'm only thinking of the Xserve themselves. I've ever seen on them has been the the Toslink optical audio port. Um, optical. Uh, I'm going to have to look that up, but I thought that this had some sort of special yeah. special sort of like Xserve type uh-huh. connector. And if there was a, It's right um, next to the unicorn port. No, I, <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking it up. Mac Pro external okay. ports and connector. No, I'm looking it up because I thought that the thing had something. No, it... Sure it has PCI something. X, oh, no, that's not it. No, I guess it doesn't. Maybe I'm just thinking of the Xserves themselves that communicate Maybe, with each other. Maybe, yeah, the Xserves, I'm sure, have whatever I, the hell you want them to have. <laughs> all right. I got to find out. You know what? I'm going to I'm gonna look out the uh, Xserve ports. I'm going to do that right now. Oh. I'm telling you that these things had something. I, and my point was is that if I was able to buy a Thunderbolt adapter, then I can use this as uh, something that may be faster than Gigabit Ethernet. Oh, you see what I'm saying? Like, like, like e SATA speeds or or SATA speeds or SATA three. Like, if that were the case, then that would be nice. But it doesn't have. I mean, what would you plug that into in your current Mac Pro? It doesn't have Thunderbolt. That, that's it what I'm saying. Have, I thought like, it did. What are you gonna put it into? I don't know. I'm looking at it. S video microphone sound. If I'm turning power, uh, I got a mm, Mm-mm. Firewire. I could swear that the what was that? It was it was an X serve. It was. There was there was a special port, I remember, but I never ever saw a device that used it, and that may be why that I can't find it. Anyway, I don't know. I'm just saying that it would be nice to have SATA type speeds across a network with this Mac Pro. Yeah, yeah, um, it would be nice. Yeah, 
It's too bad it's not going to happen. <laughs> um, Mail had some new enhan- male enhancements. Oh! <laughs> yeah. It did. Mail had Literally. some enhancements. Uh, most, uh, most important, I think, was the VIP. Um, yeah. VIP so that you can go in. I it's- didn't see any... Um- and of course, I didn't see the keynote, but did they really elaborate more on that? Not much. Okay. <laughs> uh, I still don't use mail. You know, it's funny because I used Entourage for like ten years, oh, and then I'm when sorry. I moved to when I moved to Snow Leopard, at the same time I had started using Gmail so much. Oh, you just use it in the browser? That I just use it in the browser because I just because what I have is I have one browser window with four tabs. I have Gmail, Google Plus, Reader. And my documents list. So that at a moment's notice, I could say, oh, here's something interesting for the Infinite Loop show. And I just go boom, boom, and, and I'm already in. Whereas I don't have to sit there and wait for it to load. Well, so it's not like mail is somehow slower than Safari's. No, it's just, I'm just saying it's something I got used to. Mm. Um, having the browser. Well, then you up, probably love iCloud tabs. iCloud tabs looked pretty cool right so tell everybody what that was all about um so it pretty much just sounds like a better iCloud syncing of safaris yep. i mean it, so iCloud syncs safaris bookmarks, bookmarks yep. really well and um lists and folders and everything like that the reading list right now um but it it sounds like it'll also sync your tabs across mm-hmm. ios and the desktop right so if you have different tabs open, say on your iPhone or iPad, and you get to your desktop, um, you can actually open a list that will show the tabs that are open on your other device, mm-hmm. as if they, as if you made, say, like a bookmark uh, folder or list with just those. They'll just be there. Yeah, I wonder how well this would work uh, for checking in on what your kids are doing. If they use your computer and they think you're out of the room and they don't know and then they open up a browser window and it shows up on your phone, derp. Well, that kind of begs the question, how well is this going to work in general? I don't know. I mean, realistically, <laughs> you should be giving them their own account. You know, you don't want to mess it around on your this account on your true. Mac. I'm just saying that some people don't do that and because they and don't know how. And some kids are lazy. I mean, I know when I was younger, you know, and, and if I could hop on a computer for like just a second, I don't mm-hmm. want to wait to like log out and log back in. Right. I just need to look something up really quick. Yeah. You know, you just hop on uh, whoever's on right now. Mm-hmm. Game Center is coming for uh, to IO, uh, <laughs> iOS. Listen to me, OS ten to Mountain yeah, Lion, which is Lion. interesting. Um, they didn't mention anything about Gatekeeper, which I thought was interesting. No. Oh, and full um, desktop mirroring to Apple TV in Mountain Lion. That's right. Over AirPlay, That's so right. you can mirror or push not just you know video and and pictures and stuff from mm-hmm. your Mac. But the whole desktop, kind of like how the iPad will do the full full mirror, screen mirroring of mm-hmm. everything. So if you're playing a game, whatever, you can push that to your TV and show people. So take that, HBO Go. <laughs> Power Nap is uh, something oh, yeah. that... This is cool. If something you I put, like to do every day. If you, <laughs> if you put your Mac to sleep... Even though it's asleep, it'll go out. It'll it'll throw it's a couple of cycles still out. Keeping tabs and on you. It, it'll check to see if there's an update, and if there is, it'll sort of w- it's not wake itself up, but it'll it'll load as little resources as possible to just pull something down. Yeah, and then so go it, back to sleep. So if your laptop is closed and you get instead of say all your messages and and mail and everything updating when you log back in, Mm -hmm. it'll be doing it constantly when it's closed and asleep. Mm -hmm. So what this sounds like is when I close my laptop at night, I'm going to constantly be hearing the fan spin up (laughs) all night long. See, I don't know if it'll, that's what I'm saying. The new asymmetrical (laughs) fan, whatever the hell that's. It's basically a special fan design so that it doesn't make as much noise. Okay, it's still gonna make noise though. Well, I don't, and especially yeah. with this, like it's constantly checking and getting updates. Like I get a ton of mail. Mm-hmm. This is gonna be all the time. I mean, great, it has an SSD, so that's one less thing to spin up. But still, <laughs> it's gonna be spinning up a lot. I think. 
Anything else? From the developers conference, I'm surprised they didn't actually talk too much about what's new, as far as like APIs. They talked about yeah, maps and all these no, features, uh, but no Apple TV API. No, no Apple TV API, and and just nothing like can can we interface with with these new maps that they have, and what can we do with these from yeah, a developer's no point of view? Them. Nothing. They didn't say anything about that. They said really did go into there was no new iOS API calls or features like when iOS five came out last year, there was a ton of stuff in regards to the developer side and the APIs and all the new stuff you could do in Xcode and, you know, building your apps, which, you know, may have been boring for normal (laughs) consumers, but it's a developer's conference. it's, yeah, exactly. It's called WWDC yeah, they, because it's developers. They said that there were X number of, of new APIs. I don't remember. Several hundred. But that was they it. That's, that's that all they, well, no, they, they just said that there were and that's it. And you went, oh, okay. There you go. Have fun. So I just have to read the documentation. And yeah. Like, I'll totally do that. Well, I do. Oh. <laughs> Can I, you um c- can you put it into a keynote for me and then I'll just watch it later? Sure. Thank you. <laughs> I'll just do my little thing. Yeah. Just make some <laughs> puppets, you know, and <laughs> the, the, the iOS developer puppet show. Yeah. There or you maybe, go. You know, just like make it a a comic book or something. Well, or just oh, read yeah, it out. Geez. Make like an audio book. Basically, I don't want to read. So <laughs> if you could just. Have Siri read it for me, maybe. I don't know. Oh, look, I'll tell you what. I'll take the unicorn jack and plug it into the back of your there head, you and then I'll just Here feed it into, into your brain directly. Corner. How about that? The new eye plant into the back of my <laughs> <Eye> head. <plant. laughs> All right. Are we done? I think so. I think we're done. All right. So it was good. I was excited, and I still don't know what device, new machine I'm going to get. I know what I'm getting. Well, I know what somebody else is getting, more importantly, <laughs> is this barely like eight month old MacBook Pro. Eight See you month later. old. And now you're getting a new one. Mm-hmm. All right. Good for you. I hope you'll enjoy it. And um, well, I'm going to be all jealous. But <laughs> that's okay. All right. If you want to contact us, I am at Star Mike on Twitter. Casey is K A C E Y K A S O. Casey Queso. The name, not the cheese. Is that it? Yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> Infinite Loop TV on Twitter, the Infinite Loop Show at gmail.com if you want to send us email, and the Infinite Loop Show.com. And I think there's something I'm leaving out, but I can't remember. What, oh, I remember. We're not doing a show Wednesday because. Yeah, what, this am- <laughs> is the show. What amazing balls things is going to come out uh, between now and Wednesday? So we will resume our normal thing on the 20th, June 20th, I believe, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So right. you'll all be just waiting and just so ready for a new show at that point because it'll have been a week and a half instead of a week. That's right. All right. Thank you for watching and listening, and we'll talk to you later. Bye. I like Newman.